Ross Merriam, Aiden Breyer, Titan Chip versus Mono Green Truck. Nick Miller does not make the news. He <laughs> just reports it. He just breaks the news. That's all he does. He did not make the format. Ross going to fall down to 17, get himself a stomping ground, suspend a search tomorrow, and away we go, like the Joker would say. Chromatic Sphere off of an Urza's Mine for Aiden. Ross is, uh, you know, just giving it a good shove. So, oh. a wash. Yeah, that's right. Search tomorrow is going to go down to one counter. Ross will draw. Turn two. What do we got to do? It's a race. That's all it is. There's a secure tribe builder. Good start here for Ross. Could have a Titan as soon as turn at number. Let's still turn four. Search, land. Well, actually, one, two, three, four, and then land is number five. Yeah, so still turn four Titan. Aiden is going to play at Urza's power plant. He'll play a Sylvan Scry. He's going to have Tron on turn three, which makes you wonder, does Ross have the Acid Moss? Be a good spot. And he's playing how many main? Oh, just one. one. Ooh, just, just one. one. Two, just three, one for fun. Ross electing not to sacrifice the Sakura Tribe Elder. Maybe a little bit of information being in given away here. Titan Shift, it closes out a land required if you can get your opponent down to 18. Mm -hmm. So Miriam might be hoping, first of all, if he's not under any pressure to uh, get the mana right now, you, you can just afford to wait a turn. But if somehow you get in two attacks with the Tribe Elder and you get Briar down to 18, that loosens up the requirements for what you need for a lethal scape shift. Basic for us off the search tomorrow. Ross will shuffle, present, and draw, and we'll see turn number three. It's also possible that he may want to save the Sakura Tribe Elder to chump block a potential Worm Coil engine two turns from now. Because Worm Coil also creates problems with, with uh, comboing out with Valakut. They can pull themselves out of range. In comes the Tribe Elder. No Acid Moss. I think he would have spiked that by now. So there is your Mountain. And a passing of the turn. Aiden's got Tower of Power in hand. The question now, of course, is does he have a payoff? Players knew coming into the weekend that Mono Green Tron was going to be popular, didn't lose anything, but a lot of decks did. And Tron was already good in the Hogak Summer format. You can ask Dominic Harvey about that. But if you're Ross, you got to be thrilled at this. It's just a couple copies of Expedition Map and no payoff here for Aiden. Really good news here for Miriam as uh, that, well, I was going to say, gave him the option if he wanted it of, of dialing up the Sakura Tribal or for one more attack to get Briar down to 18. Looks like Miriam wants to have access to his mana now. But in any event, no big payoff card there for Briar. No copy of Worm Coil Engine or Karn. Very good news for Miriam. It is worth noting that Miriam does have a copy of Summoner's Pact in hand. The pack can find, of course, Primeval Titan and start to really do some degenerate things. Snow Covered Mountain, the weapon of choice there for Ross. Again, he is playing a main deck copy of Field of the Dead, which wants you to have a different named lands on the battlefield. So Ross will draw a card. We will see him find a copy of Explore. That's a Cinderglade that enters the battlefield untapped. This is a Summoner's Pact. Giddy up, giddy up, let's go. It's my little pony right there, Primeval Titan. Big, big pony. Mm -hmm. Big pony. Mountain deck. <laughs> I prefer to call it a mountain strategy. Yeah, I remember uh, covered an event many years ago, now in play design, but at the time, one of our favorite grinders, Michael Majors, played this. In a, uh, he was in Orlando. And he described it as some of the least satisfying magic he's played, <laughs> <laughs> played in his entire life. 
I'm not sure what kind of magic is satisfying for Michael at this point. Uh, I, I think it was the, the mixture of the deck's brute force combined with what he perceived to be an absence of satisfying decisions. There's a real lack of finesse <laughs> in the deck, I would say. Doesn't let Michael really uh, use his many skills to his advantage. Right. But sometimes you don't need to. It's just good. What's sometimes good is sometimes what's good. It's, just, it's just good and you lose. And thus far for Ross, 5-0 has demonstrated that it's pretty darn good. Ross has, let's count them, plenty of mountains on the battlefield right now as he's going to organize his land. Cinderglade does count as a mountain, so does Stomping Grounds. And three mountains over there. So uh, if he gets to attack, it's going to be bad news bears here for Aiden Bryan. Aiden's going to sacrifice an expedition map. He's just trying to figure out what land he wants to get here. Plenty of options here for a Tron player now that he already has Tron online. He might be thinking about getting a tower in the off chance that he spikes an Ulamog, the Ceaseless Hunger. There's also a Blast Zone, seems a little slow. A Ghost Quarter, seems a little slow. And a uh, Sanctum of Ugin, which seems a little slow. So, Aiden, I would recommend you draw Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger. You can kill Primeval Titan and Valakut that way. Wouldn't be bad. Aiden will and draw. Miriam would have to spend a lot of his turn uh, paying for summoners back. Absolutely. So unlikely that the next turn looks all that bad for you. Aiden has drawn a card, but I don't think there's much going on here. And if he can't kill this, uh, this Primeval Titan, Aiden will be dead. Yeah, that's just game. Yep. So I hope that he's able to do that. And uh, as you said, that's uh, just game. game. Just game. Ross Mary, I'm going to win game number one here over Aiden Briar. Aiden with no payoff from his Tron deck. So Titan Shift wins game number one rather easily, unopposed. Up a game over Mono Green Tron, and that means we're going to go to the sideboards. We'll take a look at what these players are working with in their 15 as Aiden has already gone a reaching. We'll start with him, our player on the right with three Thragtus, three Veil of Summer. Two Nature's Claim, two Dismember, five one-ofs here in Ensnaring Bridge, Trinisphere. Witchbane Orb, Mycosynth Lattice, and a Crucible Worlds, which implies that he does have Karn, the great creator, in his main deck. Uh, I like the copies of Thrag Tusk. Uh, life gain can be good against Titan Shift, pulling yourself out of lethal range. Um, it's, you know, Miriam probably has some ways to break up mana in his sideboard, so um, a little de emphasis on trying to play natural Tron into big plays and more things that can operate under something like Blood Moon or even some Stone Rains. Other side of things here for Ross, he's got three Dampening Spheres, two Obstinate Baylaw, two Veil Summer, two Force of Vigor, six one us for him, a Fry, an Anger of the Gods, a Collector, oof, Reclamation Sage, Tireless Tracker, and a Beast Within. So some nice targets for the Summoner's Pact, but uh, I think almost certainly we're going to see those Spheres. Well, the, the anti-mana measures, the Beast Within and the Damping Sphere, obviously those cards are disruptive against uh, trying to assemble Tron. I could be talked into some of the anti-artifact stuff, the Reclamation Sage, the Collector, oof, the... Force of Vigorous as well. I don't mind Tireless Tracker in this matchup also. Uh, if you think the game's going to slow down a little bit, more people, uh, both sides, start spending more of their time and energy breaking up mana, uh, Tireless Tracker can be powerful in the game that, that drags that sort of way. Those are the options there for both players. Game number two is going to be underway here in just a moment, but we want to make sure that you know about the StarCityGames.com newsletter. It's your source for Magic Gathering news. Hi, it's from some of our very best articles, including some now from Paulo Vitor Dama de Rosa the newest member of the SCG team and uh, maybe a little something this is foreshadowing on the regular coming from uh, Mr. Sullivan soon. We're talking. We're in negotiations. We are in heated negotiations. Upcoming SCG tour dates and locations. SCG IQs and game nights near you and best of all it's totally free to sign up for it. Go to starcitygames.com slash newsletter. Getting ready here for game number two between Ross Merriam and Aiden Breyer. It's Titan Shift versus Mono Green Tron. Big mana strategy seem to be pretty good, but that's also the reason I really like Burn coming into the weekend is because you uh, you beat up on big mana strategies pretty well, I think. Well, I, I think your matchup against uh, most builds of Tron is, is very good. Uh, matchups like Titan Shift are a little bit sketchier. Uh, they have more interaction, and um, they can assemble what amounts to combo kills. They can take a whole uh, turn out of the game in a way that Tron kind of can't. But yeah, I, I think that if you expected a lot of Titan Shift in Mono Green Tron, I would, I would happily sleep up Burn in that sort of field. Oh, 
We're going to be underway here in game number two in just a moment. Aiden Breyer against Ross Merriam. Aiden will be on the play, or at least has the option. Might be surprised if he chose to draw. So the member of Team Mythic Studios is going to send his hand back. Something that I honestly think this Tron deck should do a lot of with the London Mulligan. It's not hard to cobble together the Tron on turn number three, even on a hand of four cards. Uh, I've become much more aggressive about mulliganing. Yes. Even with Burn, which is a deck that's typically, you know, it has this history of, well, you need all your cards. And so you just got to keep these sketchy hands. Yep. The combination of London Mulligan plus Sunbake Canyon makes me feel like I don't mind a, a good six. I would definitely take over a sketchy seven. Whereas six months ago, my mentality was much more keep the sketchy sevens. I agree. Because like, Burn was not a good deck in Mulligan, but the London Mulligan actually makes it kind of okay. And Sunday Canyon does a lot to help you rebuild from hands where you're down a card. Yeah. So, Aiden will be taking a look at a new hand here in just a moment. We got Ross keeping his. So we'll see what the youngster, number 23 on our SD Tour leaderboard right now, can find. Going down here to at least five. Yeah, and again, you know, it's funny because previously in Magic's history, and you and I have covered quite a few matches, going down to five is basically a death sentence. Not anymore. No. Nope. Not no. anymore. Which I think is honestly kind of a good thing. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it cuts both ways, right? It's that whole it's that whole conversation we just had about boredom. Mulligan a five and feeling like I just have this bad five-card hand and I can't play Magic anymore. That's boring when that happens. It's not fun. Uh, people having the same opening in cans, the same, you know, one and two mana cards emerging early on in the game, that is also boring in its own way. And uh, the London Mulligan is good about alleviating the first camp and exacerbates the second. And I think the, the tipping point of whether or not that's good and bad has to do with how powerful the format is. I think it's a major net positive in formats that are low power and not that synergy driven and it becomes a lot more questionable as you scale up in power mulliganing for two lands and a two drop and a removal spell is fun and fine and it's good to have that mulliganing to have bizarre baghdad and all your opening hands maybe less so Well, we'll see what Aiden's five-card hand will look like four here. Four now. Oh, wow, down to four. Well, pardon me. You look away for one second, and all of a sudden, guys, looking at less cards. I'll tell you what. Ross has got to be feeling pretty good about this. You know, again, we ran into Ross late last night. And he just said, I'm playing Titan Shift, man. Flew, away, flew all the way here from Roanoke to do that. Felt pretty good about the choice, and it's hard to argue right now. 5-0. and oh, Chances are very likely he's going to be moving to 6-0. and oh. Aiden is going down to, it looks like, 3. Tron can do it on 3. Easy. It can do it on 3. You need 3 cards. That's correct. And then you need a 4th card. And you have some draw stats. And you draw a card every turn, yep. so that ought to take care of that. Yep. Easy. Nobody said it was going to be easy, but it could be easy. Keep in mind after this, we will have a time-shifted match to bring you. I've just been told we may not have a time-shifted match to bring you. Sick. You know, you know what we could do? Answer more questions from the audience. Sure. Happy to do it. I know people love that. All right, Aiden, how lucky are we? Doesn't look like a great hand. Oh, my goodness. Two? I don't know about two. <laughs> Two's not very many there, bud. Still, you got your draw step every turn, and we only need four cards. 
All right. Easy. <laughs> well, it's easy with the easies. easy. Easy. Two cards, but good game for the Acid Moss. Miriam teasing me with the deck list this weekend. One Acid Moss is begging for, for me to ask you to be on camera the whole time. Yeah. Your average two-card hand has to be a lot better than your average one-card hand, so I think we'll probably draw the line here. <laughs> Looks like Briar Mulligan two, has two Tron pieces in hand. So. Boom. Power plant. Let's go. It's not like Ross kills on turn three. No, he does not. So. If you're gonna get lucky, kid, two draw get steps. Lucky. Two draw steps. Mm -hmm. Misty. I'm here for Aiden now. Mm -hmm. Nothing personal, Ross. I'm rooting for the mold of two. Big draw. Didn't get a good look at it. Bang. Tower of Power along with the Power Plant. Mm -hmm. I hope that's a mine. Peel off a Karn. We're done. Yep. Done. See? Four cards total. Two in the hand, two draw steps. Not that hard. Search and we're all going to go down to one. Oh, the Sphere. Boo! Boo! Well, that demands now a fifth card. It does. It does. <laughs> At least one more draw step. Real tough guy over here with your damping sphere, huh? Real tough guy. Brooding all the fun. Yeah, okay. Did Aiden have it? And I just want to know if Aiden had it. Damping sphere going to slow down all the mana. Another tower. And a sphere. And pass. Ross will search for tomorrow. That's a mountain. Not the snow covered variety. What about is that Arabian Nights? What is that? Beta. Be oh, wow, geez. Somebody's fancy. And Ice Age snow covered. Goodness. What's it like? Gate crash stomping ground. You're on top of it. Ross will draw. Spells will be a little more expensive now because of the sphere. Connie Art Expedition. Sheltered Thicket. Put a counter on the enchantments. Say go. Aiden will draw. On a mulligan a two. So remember, the sphere taxes every spell beyond the first. Mm -hmm. For each spell beyond the first, it's bid. Mm hmm. Stirrings. Yep, nothing. Yep, no extras. The, the first spell is like normal. Yep. And then past that, it, the tax goes one, two, three, etc. Thanks. Basic forest. Aiden hasn't played a land yet this turn. And pass. And back to Ross. Back to Ross. Oh, the acid moss? Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> you know what? Also, trigger landfall. That's right. That's right. You see you see every angle they're part Dial it up. Bang! <laughs> that even bring mm. a smile to Ross's cold, dead hearts. Get a yeah. cinder glade. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. There it is. I was worried you were close to taking a game action over there. <laughs> oh, oh, a little O-stone. 
All right, two lands away from doing that. We're going to head back over to Ross now. Ross with a Sakura tri -Belder, a couple copies of Summoner's Packs. Another Sakura tri -Belder. We'll sack the tri -Belder. Well, we'll play the tri -Belder first. Not going to sack it just yet, I don't think. This tri -Belder is going to cost a little more because the Damping Sphere... Kaliard Expedition will be sacrificed here at some point, but we head back over to Aiden and just a passing of the turn. Ross will sacrifice one tri -Belder. We're also show a copy of Summoner's Pact to go get Primeval Titan, and we're all done, folks. Ross Merriam is going to win this game and match over Aiden Breyer. Two games, zero. 